Hi, Jonathan. Hi. Hi, teacher. Good evening. Uh, hi, good evening, Jonathan. How are you? Um, fine. Good. I'm okay, and you? Not bad. Not so bad. A little bit cold, but pretty good. <laughs> okay, it's a pleasure to um, listen. Listen. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Same here. Okay. Yeah, likewise. Um, okay. Is it very cold where you are? Sorry? Is it very cold where you are? Ah, uh, yeah. I like this weather. The you like it? Amazing. Yeah, yeah, I love it a lot. Um, the weather hot, don't lie because um, for my job, um, it's difficult to feel better and because uh, I like a lot that weather. Sorry, I didn't understand that. What, could you say that again? Okay, um, that weather, cold, <laughs> it's amazing. I like a lot. And when the weather is hot, they don't like because. No? My job, no, it's, uh, no, it's, um, what do you say, it's, um, no sé, estresante o, o muy pesado, o así como disgusto. Oh, you don't like it when it's... Yeah, I don't like it uh, because, um, sudar, no sé, algo así. Ah, uh, sweat, because you sweat. Uh, because my body said um, it's disgusting. I don't like the, the hot, <laughs> only the cold. The cold is amazing okay. to me, to me. Mm -hmm. I yeah, I love that weather. I, I don't like sweater, but my body have a balance to hot and the cold, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, um, well, you know what? I, I don't like, I don't like to be sticky, like, um, you know, when, when it's hot, I don't like to be like all sticky, you know, like feeling, you know, like sweaty and everything. I don't like that, but I do like hot weather. I love the sun. This weather, mm, not so much. Um, the thing is that, for example, for me personally, it's not very good because I have problems um, I have a, what is called fibromyalgia. So with the with this weather, my pain gets worse. So I don't really like that. Um, okay. But for sleeping, I love it. Sleeping is wonderful. I love uh, it. At night, you rest a lot. And yeah. I, great I, I love being able to uh, put a lot of warm bl blankets and the air is cold. I, I like that. I like to two, two or three blankets. Yeah, I, 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 I <laughs> like two or three. <laughs> At the same time. Okay, okay, that's yeah, great. Yeah, I love. The thing is that um, I, I, my bedroom is um, on the second floor. Ah, uh, yeah. It's in high up, and um, the material of the uh, that it's um, the the room is made of from. It's uh, very very hot in the in during the day, and at night yeah. really cold. So um, around twenty or nineteen Celsius. Yeah, no? Probably, yeah. So it's um, okay. yeah. It, it's and the wind comes directly in. Um, oh, so. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's very very cool. Like on a regular day, on a normal day, it's my it's very cool. So now, can you imagine in this weather, right? It's much cooler. Yeah. Okay, I I didn't understand the Fahrenheit grade, the measure, um, because in El Salvador we use Celsius, Celsius. Right but Fahrenheit is not nice. No, for the number and uh, um, cantidad de grados, measure of red, no? Sorry? Uh, when you talk about, for example, how do you say 
cantidad de grados? Uh, the, the amount of degrees. Amount of degrees, ah, okay. It's different when you try to calculate or compare Celsius with Fahrenheit. Yeah, I, yeah, I understand. I don't understand. I don't understand that either. Like for me, conver the conversion of changing from Fahrenheit to Celsius, I don't get it, honestly. But um, okay. yeah, I, I, I just know that, for example, like a, when when um, it's like somewhere like it's very hot when it's 90, 90 degrees Celsius and high and higher then it's really hot that's all i know but other than that no and usually people usually um it, when it's around like 30 or 40 it's really cold yeah really um, good and celsius is the minus great it's minus it's yeah, yeah exactly yeah exactly well, hello girls, Delia, Carla, Michelle, Irania. How are you? Fine, thank you, teacher. And you? No, not bad. We're just talking with uh, Jonathan about the weather. Um, you know, that it's uh, very cold. <laughs> um, and uh, it, some people like it, some people don't. Um, I like, I was telling uh, Jonathan, I love I love this weather for sleeping, but during the day I don't like it so much because it makes my um, my body hurt. Like the this weather is not good for my body. But um, but other than that, I'm I'm great. <laughs> How about you, girls? Do you like this weather? Yeah. 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 <laughs> do, you, do you prefer Do you prefer this kind of weather, or do you like it more when it's very hot? or not so hot, but when it's very hot and sunny. I like this it's, it's very, very hot, but today it's cold. Yeah. Do you like it with this weather, Irania? Excuse me? Do you like the weather? Yes. Yeah? Okay, good, good, good. Okay, excellent. Um, you knew right, you, you the, the cup coffee hot teacher. <laughs> oh, yeah, a hot cup. Yeah. Well, actually, no, you know what? I prefer a hot chocolate. Oh, my God. I like the coffee. Yeah, hot cocoa. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. With bread. Huh? With bread. Oh, with a Only coffee pastry. In with pastry. Pan dulce is pastry. Uh, okay, pastry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Like a semita. Yeah. That that, that sounds good. <laughs> that sounds really good. Actually. <laughs> yeah. Uh, teacher, uh, when you say pan dulce, like sweet bread, no? Uh, um, I understand that pastry is more um, special. Met. Yeah, it, the thing is that sweet bread is not it's not something that we commonly use. Uh, it's more like, yes, you're right that pastry, um, it, pastry is a, usually a little bit more fancy. It's fancier. But um, others, if, if it's just if it's just regular, we would just say something like cookies. The thing is that, you know, in, in um, like, in English speaking countries, there are no such things like semita and, you know. Um, uh, when you learn the uh, facts of Pansinaí, we try to translate the, Jose, uh, they wrote um, sweet bread. Sweet when bread. You, when mm -hmm. you read that facts of the, of the Yeah, like I said. And it's um, I, I understand that uh, the, for example, uh, Italian sweet or French sweet, it's more, you know, um, it's, it's the best quality. I think uh, they say it's faster. Italian? Uh, for example, um, I don't know, I, I don't remember the name of the, of the bread or sweet breads. 
specific, but I I think semester is uh, more more real. Um, it's not common bread, sweet bread. It's uh, yeah, so so more elegant. What I was explaining is that. Um, you know, in English speaking countries, there's really no, uh, it doesn't exist that like um, semita and, and um, it, it, what is it like, uh, what do you guys, what, what other things are there? There's um, uh, Maria Luisa and um, in Peperecha. And, uh, yeah, well, a whole bunch of things, right? Um, there's really not that those things. So it's basically, um, you either have like biscuits and cookies, right? Okay, or uh, yeah, so something like that. That's or, what we would really call it, right? And then little, little just women. Yeah, so pastry is more like um, um, yeah, anything that you would you would eat that is not a cookie or or a biscuit. Mm -hmm. That would be a pastry or or a cake, right? Okay, so those are like more common, like like you just say cookies, um, biscuits, cake, you know, oh, and then everything else would just be ba a pastry. Mm -hmm. Like I said, yes, you could say it's sweet bread, but it's not something very commonly used among native speakers. Yeah, so that, that I, I mean, they will understand it, but it's more common to say pastry. Mm -hmm. Well, Anyways, guys, um, just letting you, I, I wanted to make sure uh, everybody received my message um, about um, giving in the documents. Everybody has given in your documents already? Yes, I sent uh, uh, my email. Okay. My ID, my ID and uh, inscription page. Sure. Yeah, because uh, the reason is because you know that we're going to be starting, the idea is to start next module uh, on Monday, right? So in order for us to be able to give in the, um, the, the paperwork on time and have Insafor um, authorize it, then we need to have it in, um, well, basically it was yesterday. Yesterday was the deadline, uh, but you know, I was asking in case um, because even today they would, we would see how we could help you. Um, so just making sure that everybody has it. And also remember that it's important for you to finish the, the uh, platform uh, um, and get a minimum of 80%. If you do not get, if you do not finish the platform or you don't have a minimum of 80%, even if you have put in your documents, we won't be able to um, get put you into the next level. Okay, so uh, do remember that so that we can, uh, we can help you with that. Okay, so um, class, before we continue here, uh, I wanted to go over um, the, the class from, from, from yesterday. Uh, I just wanted to quickly do a review because I want to um, Make sure you understand. Okay, so basically, um, I gave yesterday. We saw that there, when we are to, um, describing a problem, we can use. So, just a very quick review. Describe. Let's see. Scribing a problem using um, as participles as adjectives and with nouns. Okay, so there you go. Okay, so this is uh, the topic that we saw. 
and um, oh, let me just adjust that because I noticed that the, the width is cut. There we go. Oh, now the B is cut. Okay, there we go. All right, so we saw that there are three forms. For example, we could say the Uh, what's the problem with, um, I don't know, we could say, what's the problem with uh, your, um, what's the problem with your t-shirt, okay? What's the problem with the t-shirt? We can say the t-shirt the is stained. I'm oh, sorry, no, I'm going to say torn. Okay, so that's one way we can say it. Another way we can say it is um, there is a tear in the t shirt. Or we can have we can say the t-shirt has a tear. Okay, so these uh, are three sentences that basically say the same thing, right? Um, so the same idea, describing the problem but using three different ways, right? So uh, we establish that this way. What are we doing here? Is where we have the subject plus B plus uh, plus participle. Okay. And then if you want, we can have the complement. Okay, if, if, if it's necessary, if not, then just leave it there, like that, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and over here, uh, we saw that we can use there is or there are, plus the, um, the noun, right? This a compliment. Okay. And then there was the other one where we can say the subject, the subject plus have or has. Plus the noun and the complement if necessary. Okay, so the, that's what we basically established um, yesterday, right? Uh, do you guys have any questions about this? Anything you wanna ask about? About these three problems, these three ways to describe a problem. Um, the second sentence don't exist. No. Yeah, in this case, uh, I, I better be, to be okay. mm -hmm. yeah. In this case, it's there. Um, there, we just put there is because it, it always goes together. Right? So there, it's always going to be. You can't say there be right. Or sorry, there, we don't say there have. We always say there is, there are, right? So we it, it goes always together with the verb to be. That's one. Okay. Anything else? Any other questions? No. Okay. All right. So what I'm gonna get you guys to do right now is I'd like you to uh, work 
with a group. You're gonna, I'm gonna put you in two small groups and I want you to think about things that are, a, what's pro, what's, what are some pro, of the problems that you have in your house, okay? Uh, what problems would you describe? To give an example, um, maybe uh, we could say that the, the TV um, is scratched. This TV, the TV is scratched, right? Um, or we can say there is um, there is a crack in my I don't know. There's a crack in my radio. Radio, okay, sure, yeah, okay. So things like that. What are some problems that you have around the house? Okay. So you can use any one of these three sentences um, or structures, better said, to talk about the things that are need to be improved in your house. You got it, everybody? Do you understand what you're going to do? Got it. I got it. Okay. So you can take a picture of this if you need to. Okay. Okay, all right. So guys, I'm going to right now put you in a group. Let's see. Um, Give me a second. Um, oh man, I don't know why it's not giving me the option of saying how long. Ah, okay, okay. Um, we write uh, three sentences uh, about mm -hmm. describing a problem using past participles and as such it is found with now. Um, the, the form uh, is we write subject plus B and plus as possible. And we talk about um, the house or the home, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, for example, I, I wrote in the chat. Give me a link. Okay. My computer Is past participle. Um, is this uh, How do you say mojar? Wet? Wet? No, I don't remember wet. Wet. 
because my class have, have water. Uh, my computer is wet because my class tiene agua. No, have, 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 sorry, sorry, have. Uh, my computer is wet because my glass had water. Tenía agua. Ah, my. My music. Do you guys see the questions? Um, no, no, teacher. Okay. Uh, we, we wrote um, three sentences about resolving, describing a problem which was participle. With the form when you wrote in the screen, on the whiteboard, sorry. Sorry? Uh, we wrote three tenses about describing a problem using post participle. Okay, wonderful. We use, we use um, the form when you wrote in that whiteboard. Perfect. Okay, good. Irani, how about you? Do you have any questions? Not teacher. You sure? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. If you guys have any questions, um, I'll just call me back. I'm going to go and see uh, the other groups to see um, how they're doing. Okay. Okay, teacher. All right. Thanks. You're welcome. Okay. A crack. There is a crack in the TV. And that TV has a crack. Teacher. Yes. <laughs> How do you say um, rajadura? Uh, crack. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you girls have any questions? Any, any problems at all that you want to ask me about? No. no, you're sure? Yes. Yes, um, in my case, my problem is with the, with the platform. Oh, okay, what's the problem, Michelle? Um, I told you yesterday that in uh. section 5.4, the, the condition I, right? I yes mm -hmm. but I um fix one mm -hmm. but I have one that I don't know how to do it okay uh I will I will definitely answer that question at the end of the class okay so just remind me and tell me which one it is okay okay all right um, do you girls you. have any, any other questions you want me to answer? Not teacher. No, you sure? Yes. Okay. All right, go ahead then. Continue. Pretend I'm not here. Continue working. Okay. For example, Michelle, um, my internet is broken. It's broke yesterday. Is that correct, teacher? Uh, do we would just say that my 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 TV broke. It's or sorry, my TV is broken. Just not that we wouldn't say yesterday because then you're using the break as a as a verb. But here we're using it as an adjective. Okay. It's like you can't say in Spanish, "Mi televisor está quebrado ayer." 
-hmm. Right? Uh, in the case in the internet, la señal. Uh huh. How do you say? It? Um, I don't know what 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 verb do you, you you're asking about like the what verb to use? Yes. Hmm. I would say, um, hmm, good question. Uh, my, my internet signal is, um, Really? Maybe. Yeah, but we're, we're using past participle here. It's, yeah, you could say, well, yeah, you can use it as a present participle, it's failing. Um, or we can say um, my my internet connection is um, I don't know it wouldn't be damaged because well unless um, hmm. I don't know if we can use a verb for that one. To make it uh, the past participle into an ad, uh, adverb, sorry, an adjective. I'm not too sure about that. Um, let me think about that and I'll get back to you, okay? Okay. In the meantime, you can go ahead and talk about other things. Other sentences. Um, um, what do you say? Decomposo. <laughs> uh, broken down. Okay. Mm hmm. My computer break it down. No, is broken down. Is breaking down. No, no. Past participle. What's past participle break? Mm -hmm. Broken. Mm -hmm. Exactly, broken. So it'd be my computer um, yes. is broken down. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. Teacher, and I can say, um, my brother is driving. My brother is? Driving. Dri driven. Driven, yes. Uh, no. No. Um, like we can say I only driven have to use or something. Adjectives. Uh, remember, these are adjectives, right? Okay. Right. So these these are not verbs. They they're adjectives. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes. Okay, um, so go ahead. Well, actually, girls, we're going to go back to the main room right now. I'm going to call you back to the main room because I want to continue. Um, I want to continue working on some. Sure. Else, and okay? Yeah. And if I say um, the cell phone is wrong, it's okay. Is what? Wrong or it's the past participle of ring or no is 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 brought uh no because in that case um that that's not an a, it wouldn't be an adjective it wouldn't be an adjective wow. el celular está traído really doesn't make sense right so it wouldn't be an adjective Remember, has to no. be clean with the ring. 
this one. Sorry? What is the meaning of ring? A ring. Ring? Yes. Eh, sonar. Uh -huh. So the cell phone is wrong? Um, I don't know if that makes sense because I would be like saying eh, el celular está sonado. Which doesn't really make sense. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Teacher. Yeah. Uh, Delia says the internet is broken, broken down, <laughs> or broken. Um, damaged or. Um... Delia, Delia, Teresa. Ah, okay. I think she's. I think she's. Um, sending me. What is what is Delia's what is Delia's um, last name? Do you know? Peraza. Peraza de no sé cómo se fue. Delia. Mm -hmm. I think yeah, it's probably her. Okay, yeah. yeah, thanks. Okay. All right, guys, I'm going to call you back to the main room. So I'll see you guys there in a moment. Okay. Okay. Okay, class, um, I think I have almost everybody here. No. Okay, now I have everybody here, good. Okay, so guys, uh, what we're gonna do right now is I'm going to be explaining a little bit now about, we're gonna go into talking about unreal conditionals, okay? Unreal conditionals are when we are talking about a um, how should I say it? Uh, when we're talking about a imaginary situation, okay? Something that is either impossible to happen or it's highly unlikely that it's gonna happen, okay? So if, if it's something that, you know, there's a very, there's a very small percentage of a chance probability that it's gonna happen, or it's impossible for it to happen, then we're gonna be using the conditional. It's actually called the second conditional. So I'm, gonna, I'm going to be explaining that right now. Um, hold on, give me a second. Okay, all right. Can you all see right my, my screen right now? Yeah, can you see my screen? Yeah, I can see Perfect. whiteboard. Perfect. So we're gonna talk about second.
this is second, oops, second conditional. It's also called type two conditionals. It, I'm giving you this information because uh, you might find it, if you want to find like more information on the internet, you might find it as type two conditionals. So second conditional or type two conditional. Okay, so um, I'm going to give you some examples here so you can see what I'm talking about. Teacher, yeah. Uh, how many conditional exist? Four. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's type zero, type one, type two, and type three. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this oh. is type. So this is actually, in theory, this is a third conditional. The fourth conditional doesn't exist. The first, yes. No, There's... the fourth. Oh the no, no, fourth no, doesn't exist. Now, there's what we call mixed conditionals, which is a combination of type two and type three, but it's not called type four. It's just, it's called uh, conditional. I confuse. Yeah. The mix, why? Because we combine type two and type three. It's a mix of the two. But that's later. Right now, okay. we're, right now, okay. don't worry about that because we haven't we haven't even started with type two, right? So don't worry about that. Okay. Um, so, anyways, it, to give an example, it, I can say this is a very common. Like when you're giving advice, you can say, "If I were you, I would um, tell them the truth." The truth. Okay, so this is a very like common way to talk about second conditionals. Um, if I were you, I would tell them the truth, right? Like you say in Spanish to it too, right? Um, si yo fuera, si yo fuera tú, yo le diría la, yo le de, les diría la verdad, right? So this is very common. So, um. To get, so to give you an exa another example, um, no, so I'm gonna. Um, if they were played football, they would want the mundial soccer no uh, world cup sorry if they played we could say uh for example no? if they could play soccer they would win the world, the cup. world cup okay sure. and i'll give you another one if she if she um If she uh, could, no. if she uh, had a pet, oh no, if she had a, a An exotic pet, let's say an exotic pet. 
she would have a um, a tiger. Okay, so these are all sentences with the second type, the second conditional. Okay, um, so all of these contain the second conditional. If you notice, all of these are either impossible or highly unlikely. Okay, now for example, this one. If I were you, I would tell them the truth. Is it possible for me to be you? Is that a possibility for me to be you? Can I be you? Um, if you tell a light, mm, no. <laughs> no, but is it po like in real life, <laughs> can I be you? Is it possible for a, for Jessica Guerrero to be Jonathan, for example? Is it possible? No. No, right? Only in the movie, maybe we can change bodies. <laughs> but but in real life, it's not possible, right? So that's an, an impossibility. So then we would use a second conditional. This one, if they could play soccer, they would win the World Cup. Now, it, that means that they cannot play soccer. Right? If they could play soccer, means that it's not like they can't play it. So uh, if the player was Salvadorian, never, never, never. You never know. You never know. <laughs> uh, you know, sometimes miracles happen. <laughs> okay. So anyways, um, it, it, obviously this is a very unlikely situation because they don't they don't know how to play soccer so since they don't they or basically they can't play soccer then it's very unlikely that they're going to play that they're going to play World Cup. the other one if she had an exotic pet she would have a tiger again this one is unlikely to have an exotic pet like how how prob how how much of a probability uh, if you live in on dubai yes yes but you know the probability <laughs> is not very high that you're going to live in Dubai, <laughs> right? It's not a very big probability. The probability is very small to live in Dubai and have an exotic pet. If you so, live in a pop up, no. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so in this case, the second conditional would uh, always be either impossible or highly unlikely. Now, if you, I want you to notice some things here uh, with the structure. The first thing I want you to notice is that this, what I use in the first part here. So in the first part, look at this. What do you notice about this? What structure is this? Um, past participle. If plus nope. subject. Nope, it's not past participle. Um, ouch. Where could and have. Mora? Mora? No. Girls? Any ideas? Girls, Sonia, Irania, Michelle, Carla. Subject. Okay, the verb here. What form is this? Were, could, had. What is the structure? What is the name of that structure? Conditional. No. No. Just no. 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 Part no. In, in, Sorry. In, the part that is over here. That is circled. What is the name of that? Were, could, had. What's the structure? Simple present, simple past, present perfect, past perfect, present continuous, past continuous, what? Present perfect. No. Were, could, had. Yeah. Simple past. 
Exactly. This is a simple past, right? Were, could, had, simple past. So basically, when we have in the if clause, we're going to be using the simple past. That's structure. Okay. So in the if clause, we're always going to use the simple present. Okay. Got it? Got it. Questions? No. Questions, anybody? Not sure. So far, so good? Yeah? Okay. All right. So I'm going to write here just so that you guys don't get confused. I'm going to write it down here. So the structure would be if plus subject plus simple press, simple password. <coughs> Now, look over here. What do we use after after um, the? What do we use in this in the main clause? We use. Um, what do we? Subject use? plus. Plus what? Mm -hmm. um, it's not a model, no? Yeah, the model, exactly. We use a model. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Now, I have used the word wood, the model wood, but wood is not only the, the only model that is possible to use, just for you to know that there are actually three models that we can use with this. And I used wood, but um, you don't have to use wood. You can use actually could and might. Those are the, the two, the other two that it's possible, okay? Now, also after, after the wood, we use, um, we use the base form of the verb, okay? So yeah. we don't, we don't change anything. Notice like, for example, with she, you say she would have, not she would has. Okay. Yeah, so, because so. the model modified the verb. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So the model would, after remember what I've told you, one hundred percent of the time, always, 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 after model we use the base form of the verb. Okay. So we're always going to use the base form independent of the subject. Okay. That is what we use in the in the main clause. Okay, so in the main clause we use would, could, or might plus plus the um, plus the the base the base verb. Okay, just um, so that you guys uh, are clear about this, I'm actually going to change the color. I'm going to change this to uh, red to refer to this part right here, you know, and then I'm going to write over here. I'm going to um, Okay, so then we have the subject. Actually, it's the other one. This one. Yeah. So, okay, so we have the subject plus would or could or might. Okay. And um, it's also possible to use the negative form. So it would be also in the negative, it would be wouldn't. 
over here, wooden, wooden, sorry. Okay, and then after that, we're gonna, sorry, we're gonna use um, the base, base, um, base form. Okay. And after that, we can use the complement. if it's necessary. Okay, all right, so there you go. So this is how we would create it. Now, if you notice though, there's something else that is very important with this one. Um, and that is that a, if you notice here, to be able to separate these two, we use an important separator. Have you noticed what the separator is? We use the separation, the separator of the comma. Okay. So if you notice, we're separating with a comma. Okay, so that comma needs to be there. Okay, it always has to be there. So I'm actually going to put, and I'm going to write here the comma. We always have to put the comma. However, okay, so that's that always goes in between there. However, something that you have to know is that it's possible, okay, it's possible for me to eliminate that comma. And the way that I'm going to eliminate it is if I decide to put the base, the, the, the main clause, this one, if I decided to put it before this one. So it is possible for you to have Do this quickly. So it is possible for me to have the subject. Let me. So it is possible for me to have. Oh, sorry. The subject plus would or wouldn't or could. or couldn't. Or might or might not. Might, sorry, actually might not. Or uh, plus, sorry, plus the base form. Okay, so it is possible to have this. And then over here, we are going to have the if plus the subject plus simple past. So that is possible to have this. And in this case, if we put it like this, there's going to be no comma in the middle. Okay, so only put a comma if we have the if at the beginning, the if clause at the beginning. So it's possible to say I would Sorry, it's possible for me to say, um, I don't know what. Okay, I, if I, so I would tell them the truth if I were you, or they would win the World Cup if they could play soccer, or she would have a tiger if she had an exotic animal, oh, sorry, an exotic pet. So it's also possible to do the other way around. Does that make sense for everybody? Yeah, yeah, teacher. Yeah. Any questions?
Any questions, class? No? Okay, guys, I'm sorry. I'm going to just to change this um, because we can't say mightn't. We would say might not. Okay, just like that. All right, girls and guys, we're going to finish there today. Um, so now, um, Michelle, in case you are wondering, this would be the structure that you are going to be following. The problem that you had was this, that we're not, you were not using the simple past, so you were using the base form. And over here, we have to use the simple past. Always with the if clause, we're gonna use the simple past, okay? Teacher, and it's okay. Um, it's the, the number four. Um, will you broke into your houses if you locked yourself out? Mm -hmm, locked, mm -hmm, exactly, it would be locked, okay? But I I put like that and it says that is wrong. Um, write to me in the WhatsApp group and show me exactly how you wrote it and I will tell you what's the problem, okay? Okay. Okay. All right, guys. Okay. That will be all for today. It's been a pleasure having you, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Okay? Okay, teacher. All right. Take okay, care. Teacher. Bye. Okay. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, classmates. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.